Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout, here with Alan Malventano. Uh, we have another SSD story to talk to you about. This time we're looking at the crucial M550 series of solid state drives. Uh, we had recently, I'd say in the last couple of months, talked about Crucial in terms of the MX100. Yep. So where does this product fall in their lineup? So there was an M500. Yes. Which was previously the only model they made. Then they made an MX100, which was a much lower cost option. That's what they were going for. Yeah, that kind of became one of our de facto recommendations for like a budget SSD. Yeah, because the, the, co the performance wasn't great as you got to the smaller capacities, but the, um, what was it, the half a terabyte? Yeah, half a terabyte capacity was basically the same, like, die layout as the higher performing models, so it performed, like, awesome. Yeah. And it was really low cost. Low cost. Right. Um, so that was the MX100. Now we have the M550. This one here. Which is that one there. Yep. Um, they make that in more capacities. That's going to be the one, like, for the, for the MX100, we said it's only in two and a half inch. Right, only right. two and a half inch so, form factor. So that's going to be the guy that's an M SATA and you know M.2 and everything else that's going to be available, and it's available all the way up to one terabyte. Okay, so right. we have up to one terabyte. So it's going to be the broad, one. you know, like it's going to cover everything basically, okay. right? Okay. Um, same controller, right? So it's the same Marvel controller that was in the MX100. Okay. Which performed very well at the highest capacity points. So the difference here is that they did different things with the die arrangement in how they packaged this SSD in the smaller capacities. So in order to keep higher numbers of dies, they actually dropped down to a uh, 64 gigabit die okay. so that they could use more of them because usually there are 128 gigabit dies like in the MX100. The, the, the benefit of having more dies means you have more flash memory to address for the controller to address at any given time and thus can improve performance? Yes, because it's more parallel. Right. Right. Okay. Um, so when you now where this runs into an issue is like 128 gig SSD, where you have the capacity is low enough that you can't populate with all 128 right. gigabit. Right. You, you might not even have like flash memory. You, you might even see like the smaller capacities usually wouldn't even have chips on both sides of the board mm -hmm. okay. to the point where it's just like there's just too few dies to install. Okay. Right. So by using smaller dies, they're able to keep those numbers higher. So the performance stays pretty high all the way down to even 128 hmm. gigabyte capacity hmm. point. That's where like, I would say 256 through 1 terabyte perform all very, very similarly. And then once you hit 128, it drops down, like, maybe by, like, 10% or so. But a much less of a drop-off than the MX100. Yeah, the MX100 dropped, like, it was, like, half again and another half again in, like, oh, IOPS. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then the write speeds, like, tapered off really sharply and, and that sort of thing on the MX100. Gotcha. Not the case on the M550. Um, which is good. Uh, and uh, performance is very similar to the ADATA, the SP920, which we did a full roundup on um, about a month or two back, I yeah. think. Um, and this is actually the same exact kind of a spread. So when we looked at ADATA, it was all four capacities. Same deal here, same controller, same kind of flash. Okay. What did they change on the Crucial version of this? Is it updated firmware? Uh, the firmware seems to have some more tweaks that give it a little more performance edge. I think okay. they just kind of tightened up the timings a little bit. Nothing where, super dramatic. Uh, Nothing really crazy, but it does perform better than the equivalent ADATA models because ADATA is just using like the generic Marvell firmware, where right. like, Crucial has been dealing with like they've they've been in the uh, using the Marvell controllers like since the very beginning. Since the beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they have kind of more inroads with those guys, and they can make more tweaks to the okay. firmware. All right. Uh, what about like pricing? Right, we knew where the MX100 was in terms of pricing. We knew yep. that it was very very aggressive. Um, that it took us into great cost per gigabyte metrics. I think we saw like sub 40 gigabytes, sub 40, 40 cent, cents uh, per gigabyte on, on that, and uh, I think that worked out really well. What about with the M550? It's going to be a little bit higher because of the higher performance? Uh, maybe a little bit higher, but it is bouncing around a lot. Um, In terms of day-to-day -day changes. Yeah, so we started working on this review a few weeks back, and uh, when we wrote all the prices in there, uh, like the half terabyte model was over 300 bucks, a little bit over 300 bucks. Okay. Still pretty cheap. Where right. was that at? What's, what's that in cost per gig? Uh, that was uh, around 60 cents a gig. Okay. Right. Okay. And then, Not uh, awful. And then just today, that price dropped, actually yesterday, the price dropped to 240 So $240 for a... Half a terabyte. For 512 Yeah, which is 47 cents a gig. Okay. So That's the bad. prices are fluctuating a lot. Yeah. Basically. That um, happens a lot in the SSD market these days, which uh, you, I'm glad as long as you are paying attention, right? And you're yeah. kind of looking for whatever the good yeah. deal is. The lowest cost, time. the lowest cost you can get for these is actually the one terabyte model, which uh, right now, as we're recording this video, is $437. That's 44 cents a gig. 
That's pretty good. Yeah. And again, this is for. Would you consider this uh, like Crucials or in Marvel's like highest performance product that they have right now? It is. Yeah. The the, okay. the M550 is supposed to be their kind of flagship. Like that's their performer. All right. Yeah. Any any other like product that stands out in terms of like its primary competitors? This doesn't like if you look at like say the Intel SSD 730s. Those are significantly more expensive than what this is. If um, you look at yeah. Uh, OCZ's vector drives, they're a little bit more expensive than this. Samsung kind of maybe being the primary competitor here with the 840 Evo, the 850 it, it Pro is. that's out now. It is. Uh, the 850 Pro actually um, in three out of four mm -hmm. of the iometer results, which is just raw iOS per second mixed workload kind of stuff, yeah. uh, the Samsung drive does actually eke out faster than the Crucial. Victory over this. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it is similar, but you know. But this is this as of today is still less expensive than yes. what the expected price is because I think those yes, are shipping true. like just about now ish to yeah. the eight fifty pro so we'll see where their pricing kind of settles yep. but these are so if but these if, are on the market now they're already you know being kind of marked down and yeah that sort of thing so. yeah people are starting to have sales on Newegg yeah. and Amazon and, and crucial these. crucial historically are the drives that we see just take really massive dips. In price, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you even, I think you even bought one a while back, like it was. Oh, yeah. It was like, I think they were refurbs, is when I bought those. I remember it was breaking the $1 per gigabyte barrier, and I was like, well, yeah. I got to buy two or three of these. Now. Yeah, I was like, that was, but that was back when <laughs> the majority were much higher than that, yeah. right? And yeah. so the, the, the crucial drives tend to do those kind of, you know, fire sale right. kind of prices, right. price dips. Yeah. So is this a product you would recommend for somebody that's like, hey, I'm building a new system. I need a one terabyte or a five twelve gig drive for kind of my primary system. I would I would recommend this drive for that, but I would also recommend it since the um, the other thing you run into is in the lowest capacity point. Usually the price of those the 128 gig will usually be yeah. like much closer to a dollar a gig because you have to pay for the controller and the you know the packaging of the drive, right? Sure. So the 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 scale like the economies of scale kind of you know. Yeah. You, you lose some of that you, when you when get down to the lowest capacity, right? Uh, you can buy the 128 gig for 88 bucks right now. Okay, so even if you're on a budget, it's still a good job. Even if you're on a budget, we will almost always recommend to you you should get an SSD, even if you have to get a small smaller capacity like 128 yep. gigs, which is plenty for. Uh, I mean, heck, we were using like 128, 160 gigs on our SSD on our graphics test beds for a while. Yep. Right, and so we have to have, you can get your operating system on there, your applications, a handful of games, you know, you'll still have to have secondary drives to move stuff back and forth to. And, and uh, I can bucks, say, that's a pretty good deal. We don't have all the performance figures to back it up yet, but just kind of like rough, you know, guesstimation calculations, a 128 gig model of like an 850 Pro, mm -hmm. those dies are larger than 64 gigabyte. So you think it may scale down lower than what this it's crucial drive does at the low capacity. Yeah, capacity. potentially the 128 gig of this guy might outperform an 850 Pro. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you guys want a uh, full evaluation, we've got all the benchmarks that Alan ran, as well as more pictures if you want to see how stuff looks when it's torn down at PCPer.com. And obviously we have it in the link, uh, the description of this video on YouTube as well. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.